Hey, Shalom, Yashirala Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Shai. Getting right into the video. We're going to be talking about the doctrine of if you're saved once, are you always saved? And for those of y'all brothers who are unfamiliar with this doctrine, this is a Christian theology where they essentially, some churches essentially believe that once you quote unquote find Jesus, once you're baptized in Jesus' name, or you know, you come into the faith or whatever it might be, that you stay within that faith. And the reason why I say Christians, and I was using the term Jesus, because most of y'all brothers who are Israelites, y'all obviously understand and you don't follow this. But this is something that I had seen on IG threads. Y'all should download IG threads because you see a lot of the different doctrines of people who follow the, the church system and believe the Bible according to what the church says. And this is one doctrine that comes through it. This is the tweet that, or this is the thread that actually inspired me to do this video. As y'all can see, uh, this sister she said losing your salvation is a false doctrine by the way so basically i went through this thread and you can see there's a lot of people agreeing with her but there are also people who disagree now for those of y'all who follow me like i mean my page y'all know that i don't believe in this and most brothers who are israelites don't believe in this but this comes from a misconstruing of certain scriptures because in the bible there are certain scriptures that say hey if you do this you'll be saved like Mark 16, it says, if you're baptized, you will be saved. Romans 10 and I think verse 9, it says, if you confess the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, you will be saved. So there are verses that tell you, hey, when you do this, you will be saved. But then there are, in contrast, dodge, uh, certain scriptures that say, if you don't follow this after a certain point, or if you do this, you won't be saved. If you do this, you won't be saved. So a lot of people can become confused when they read it because it seems like it's saying contradictory things. So I wanna break this down. So this is a quick little overview. It says, once saved, always saved is a Christian doctrine that provides believers with the assurance of their salvation. It is also known as eternal security. The doctrine states that once a person is saved, they cannot sin in a way that would cause them to lose their salvation. Some say this doctrine is comforting, but others point out that the Bible also says that people must endure faithfully to the end to be saved. So as y'all can see, you got one person who is saying that when you're coming into the faith, if you're of the Most High's elect, there's nothing that you can do to lose your salvation, which is true. If the Most High essentially said that you will make it, you will be uh, redeemed from the foundation of the earth, nothing can stop his will, obviously. But the biggest difference from that viewpoint is that you're viewing it from the Most High's viewpoint, not your own, right? And that's where the, a lot of the confusion comes from. But let me finish reading this. It says, some say the doctrine is comforting, but others point out that the Bible says that people must endure faithfully to the end to be saved. And basically what, when you brothers read the Bible, there are different viewpoints. And that's essentially why a lot of people get confused because sometimes when you read the word, the Most High is giving you a preview of the way he thinks because the Most High is omnipresent. He's, omni, he's omniscient. And what omniscience means is that he can see the entire timeline of the entire earth from the beginning to the end, all within his grasp, because he knows everything, he's created everything. Whereas with us, we're looking at it from our viewpoint, from our state of being. So we're looking at things in real time and we're reading things in real time. We're going through the ups and the downs, being tempted, falling away, coming back, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to be able to decipher when the Most High is talk, when the Bible is talking from the omniscient viewpoint compared to when it's talking from our viewpoint. And let's just get some scriptures on that real quick. All right, so we're gonna do 2 Peter chapter three and verse seven. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So according to the way the Most High views time, he sees a millennium as one day. And brothers understand that. So you have to be able to understand the Most High's timeline is not the same as ours. And just like how his timeline is not the same as ours, the way he views things from a prophetic view is a lot different from how we view things. So this is the book of Romans chapter 8 and 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High and to them that are called according to his purpose. So Paul is just letting you know, 
if you're of the most high's elect, everything that happens to you, both good and bad, is gonna be to, you know, allow you to continue to grow in the faith and to follow after the ways of the most high. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. So this is Paul when he's talking about how essentially if you're predestined to be of the Lord's elect, you will always be worked to be conformed to the image of the Most High Son. Because the Most High gave Yahweh Shai as the example that we should follow if we were to obtain salvation, right? So it says he predestinated them, he also called, meaning you're getting called into the faith. And whom he called, he also justified. So according to this scripture, it's saying that if you are called into this understanding, then you will be justified, which if you read, it says in whom he justified them, he also glorified, meaning that you will receive the glory. You will receive the glorified body and you will get a body where you cannot sin. Right. So when you read this, Paul is letting you know, hey, if you're called into this, you're justified into this, meaning if you're justified, you're going to be glorified, essentially saying that you will be saved because it's talking about the aspect of predestination, meaning the most high already knows who's of his elect but it hasn't been revealed unto us who those elect will be that's why when you go into the book of second ezra chapter 16 it says then will it be known whom are my chosen so it seems like things is contradictory because paul is saying that if you caught in this thing you justified and then you got scriptures in second ezra that say you will be there will be a time when you'll be chosen let's bring up that verse so let's read it. This is second Ezra. This is second Ezra chapter 16. I'll start at 70. It says there will be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those who fear you. Howard. they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those who fear the most high. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. They shall then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. So basically. This is in regard to those of the great tribulation, how they will be going through many things, persecution, taking away their goods, you know, kicking them out of their houses. There will be a great insurrection, speaking about Jacob's trouble. But then it says, then shall be known who are my chosen. So this scripture is saying how there will be a point in the time where it will be revealed who are the most high's chosen. So again, Paul is saying that if you are called in this, you are the chosen, you are glorified, you will, you will be justified in the eyes of the most high. But then the prophet Ezra is saying at a certain time it will be revealed. So you have to be able to understand these are two different perspectives. When you read it in Paul chapter 8 and verse 29, he's looking at it from the form of an overarching view. Where the, essentially he's he's building into you the faith and the salvation of those who are of the elect. But then you have different scriptures that are showing that you are not of the elect yet it will be revealed unto you so you need to continue to move in the faith and that's where a lot of the confusion comes because according to us none of us are saved right now where we're at none of us are saved and i'll bring scriptures that prove that out all right so this is the book of matthew chapter 24 and i'll read verse 10 it says and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What does it mean when it says the love of many shall wax cold? It's just talking about the people who are in this thing. When things get really tough, when things get really hard on them, many of their love for the Most High and His Bible and His Word and His Son is going to wax cold because they're not going to be able to take the heat of the tribulation, right? It says, verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so what does that mean it means that if you're not willing to endure all things that are going to be placed upon you if you are truly of the elect you're not going to be saved but those who are willing to endure the same shall be saved and i'll read verse 14 it says and this is the gospel of the kingdom which shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so basically what's being stated is that you're gonna have to go through hell you may have to go through a certain level of persecution, but if you get through it, you will be saved. So Christ is letting you know you have to go through certain things and endure all things and then you will make it. But if you don't endure, you won't make it. Basically, what Hamashiach is letting you know is that there are certain standards and requirements for those who will be of his elect. Does that make sense? 
So essentially what he's letting you know is that this isn't guaranteed. And just because you know who Hamashiach is, you understand the example he set, you understand the tenets of the scriptures that the Most High has established, you believe yourself to be walking in the faith with the Most High and doing the things that are necessary to please him, essentially not everybody who's doing those things now is gonna be chosen in that time. So basically, it says something different from Romans 8 and 29, but it's not a contradiction because Romans 8 and 29 is speaking at it from an om omniscient viewpoint, from the viewpoint of the Most High, where he can see in the future, he can see in the past, and he already knows who's the Lord's elect. And then this specific verse and many of the other verses that I'm going to read is talking about it from our perspective, that we don't know if we're of the elect and that we might feel that we're saved, quote unquote, saved now or that we're in the faith and that we are gonna make it. We have faith that we're gonna make it and that we're on the right path and that the Most High is gonna call us to be saved and receive salvation, but ultimately we have no clue. So when you understand that scripture, the, the doctrine once saved, always saved, if you believe that there's nothing that you can do to not make it into the faith, you're going off and that's a false doctrine. But according to the, to the view of the Most High, it is true that the elect no matter what they may do on this side, they're not gonna do anything that's gonna take them away from his love. But you shouldn't look at it like that because once you start to look at it like that, you're gonna come into a false understanding and it's gonna, oftentimes it's gonna take you out of the, the walk that you're in. Does that make sense? Here's another example, right? And this is showing you, this is a Mashiach speaking. I'll just read from the top. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and has borne and hath patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. What is the first love? The first love is the wife of thy youth. If you guys read in Proverbs 5 and 16, it speaks about how you should follow, you should love the wife of thy youth. That's speaking about the commandments. That's speaking about the way that the Most High has always set up. Because when you come into this thing, you have a fervent, you have a zeal, you have a great delight to want to do the things that pleases the Most High. But typically what happens when you get into this thing, you start to go through the motions, you start to do things half-assedly, half, half and you don't have that same devotion for the word that you used to have. So essentially you left your first love, similar to a man who's, dealing with his wife after a while he gets tired of her he feels like it's too too much of a stress and he doesn't have that same love that he had at the beginning and he has to rediscover it that's what Hamashiach is talking about for those who have left their first love so read what he says next verse 5 it says remember therefore from where you are falling and repent and do the first works or else I will come up unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place except thou repent so he's talking to the church and he's saying, you need to remember where you came from and you need to repent. So basically he's saying that if you stay on this path, I'm gonna remove your candlestick. He's literally saying that. So what he's saying is that I will take you away from this and you're not gonna be a believer anymore. So essentially what he's letting you know is that there are things that you can do where he will take your candlestick. He will take the light that was given unto you. He will take the guide and the protection that he's given you in this specific moment. He will take it away from you. So this proves and shows that you can be walking in Hamashiach. You can be believing and calling on the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh But if you don't walk in the right stead, essentially you will be condemned. So going back to that doctrine that that woman was saying where once saved, always saved, losing your salvation is unbiblical it's not because it's showing you right now Mashiach is saying if you do certain things i will take away your life and you won't be quote unquote saved anymore also i want to go to first corinthians 11 and 26 it says for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the lord's death till he come and this is talking about the Lord's Supper, a.k.a. the Passover. For those of y'all brothers who understand, you know, obviously you eat unleavened bread and you drink of the wine of the cup. It was to symbolize his blood. So he's saying, verse 27, it says, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 
But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So essentially what Paul is saying is that if you want to partake of the Passover cup and of the, the, the supper of the, of the Lord, you have to be worthily. If you're doing things that make you unworthy, then you're going to be condemned to damnation. And the reason why he, he wrote that is because when you read the letter to the Corinthians, there were people among them who were fornicators. I think he was talking about how somebody had taken, you know, his father's maid and committed some sort of fornication and it had to be condemned. Y'all can read through it. So essentially there were people who were of the church who were bad seeds, who were essentially causing the church to dwell into fornication, into wickedness. And he was saying like, look, if you're not really walking in this way, don't eat of the Lord's body and think that you're a part of this body because you're going to put the Lord's body to a shame because the most high only wants people who are truly following after the ways of his son <clears throat> and following after his commandments to be able to eat and partake of this body. And he already knew whose hearts was right and whose hearts was wrong. So he's basically warning them and saying, hey, don't eat of my son's body if you don't deserve it. This is only for those who are really walking it and really sincere and not doing things that I disapprove of. So what I'm bringing this out for is to show you that you can be <laughs> within the body. You can be within the church and you can do things to make yourself unworthily, essentially not discerning the Lord's body and causing you to go off where the most high will pluck you out of his body of his elect does that make sense the hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Hamashiach, let us go into perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from the dead works and of faith toward the most high of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment and this will we do if the most high permit it says for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the holy spirit so stop right there he's saying it is impossible if you are somebody who was enlightened and tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the holy spirit now i want y'all to remember this we're gonna go and find a verse that speaks about the seal of the holy spirit all right this is ephesians 4 and 30 it says Grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Most High, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So Paul is letting you know the Holy Spirit is what seals you unto the day of redemption. So when you read that doctrine where it says once saved, always saved Christians would be like, see, if you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, you're good. Because once you receive the Holy Spirit, you are saved. But read what he said in the first half. He says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Most High. So he's saying, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not do things that are wicked in the eyes of the Most High, because if you do, this is what's going to happen to you. Let's go to the book of Hebrews again. All right, it says, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of the Most High and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. So these are people who received the Holy Spirit and tasted the good word, knew what the word was. The Most High showed and revealed unto them his knowledge and his ways and his understanding. But it says, if they will fall away to renew them again unto repentance. So when you look at that once saved, always saved doctrine, they're saying like, hey, once you receive the taste of this Holy Spirit and you understand the ways and you believe in Jesus, quote unquote Jesus, there's nothing that you can do to fall away. But this scripture is saying something completely different. It's saying, look, if the Most High shows you the word, if you understand what you're in and you're partaking, you gain a knowledge, wisdom and understanding, but you fall away from this, you can't renew again unto repentance. So it says, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of the Most High fresh and put him to an open shame. So when it says crucify themselves to the Son of the Most High, it's meaning that when you fall away from this thing, it is the ultimate form of shame and disrespect. And essentially, it's as if you are a part of the people who are crucifying Yahweh Shai because you didn't understand the worth and the importance of what you were in, which is why you started to do the things that were so grievous to the Most High that he took away the Holy Spirit from you. So this is showing you, hey, just because you walking in this thing and you believing in the word, that doesn't mean that you're of the elect. So again, when you when people say once saved, always saved, 
they don't really understand the context of what they're reading. Let's go to Philippians 2 and 11. It says, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is the most high which work in you both to do will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the most high without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as light in the world. So basically, Paul is saying like, hey, now that I was uh, he says now that I was there, but now that I'm gone, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So why would you work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Your salvation is already guaranteed. It doesn't make no sense. Just like the whole two thirds coming back in the kingdom doctrine. Why would you follow after the ways of the most high if you have a if you have a spot in the kingdom regardless? So you have to understand that Paul, the same person who says that, you know, uh, the elect are predestined. He's also saying that you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling because he knows that not everybody within the church, not everybody within the body is essentially going to be saved. That there will be people who will be plucked out, people who will fall away, people who will put the word into an open shame. So you have to be able to understand the context of what he's saying in the moment, because if not, you can run with a doctrine that says, oh, I'm good, man. I'm reading the Bible, bro, because what it does is it puts your mind to lax. You start to relax and you don't start to abide in the word like you should, because people are telling you that you're going to be good no matter what. Any doctrine that says that you're good no matter what is not of the most high. I'm just being honest with y'all, brothers and sisters, man. So don't fall into that trap. All right, so let's go to this right here. This is First Corinthians chapter 3 and 10. It says, according to the grace of the most high, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built thereon, but let every man take heed how he built it thereupon. So this is speaking about how Paul, he laid the foundation for certain people to come into faith and other teachers built upon it. Because let's actually go up to verse 7, 3 verse 6. It says, I have planted Apollos water, but the most high gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but the most high gave it the increase. Now he that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own record, own reward according to the own labor. So essentially this is Paul saying that I can teach you things, another man can teach you things, but ultimately it's the most high who will allow you to grow in the faith and that you shouldn't glorify or give too much glory to a man who taught you anything because ultimately it's really the most high who's allowing you to grow in the faith, right? So we'll go down to verse 11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. Now, if any builder, now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. So when Paul's talking about gold, silver, precious stones, he's talking about the people who will be of the elect who will be fine rubies. Because when you read in Isaiah, it says, I will make a man more fine than the golden wedges of Ophir. When you read Proverbs 31, I forgot the verse, but it says that a virtuous woman is like a ruby, right? And when you go into Sirach, it says that the Most High will try a man like like um, gold is tried in the fire. So when you see those those metals, those precious metals, that's symbolic for those people who will be of the elect, right? But then you also have wood, hay, stubble. Why? Because wood, hay, stubble is going to be burned in the fire, meaning it's not going to hold up whenever the works are tried, either on the day of judgment day or during the great tribulation, right? So it says, verse 13, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So we know the fire is talking about the fiery tribulation, right? So basically what Paul is saying is that the most high is eventually going to try whether somebody is truly of the faith or not. Verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So basically what Paul is saying that the works that you build up, like if you're a man and you're teaching and bringing somebody into the faith, essentially the, the person that you brought in, they're going to be tried just like you. So it says, 
if any man's works abide, he has built thereon, you will receive a reward. Because those men who are teaching and bringing people into the word, you are going to be rewarded for your hard labor, right? Verse 15, it says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Meaning if you brought somebody in and essentially they couldn't, they were, weren't deemed worthy and they're burned up, you will mourn, you shall suffer some loss. But it says, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire so what paul is saying is that somebody you bring in they may not be worthy enough to make it but you will be you will uh, essentially be worthy if the lord calls you so basically what the most high is saying and what the most high is alluding to through paul is that there will be people who will be brought in right there will be people who will follow worship do whatever they need to do but whenever the most high tries them some of them will fall off some of them will fall into the world so it's showing you that just because you're a quote unquote believer now, just because you believe yourself to be saved and you're walking after things, the most high can take your candlestick. The most high can say you're not deemed worthy. You are not chosen. When the sister said losing your salvation is a false doctrine, she was wrong about that. She was wrong about that because according to our viewpoint, nothing is guaranteed. But brothers need to understand this. Obviously, if you're of the elect, it's already been known who's going to be of the elect. So the key point of this video for brothers and sisters to understand is remember, don't follow after that doctrine that tells you that you're going to be fine no matter what you do, because that's more often that 99.999% of the time. That's not at the most high. Understand that nothing in this walk is guaranteed and that if it be the will of the father, you will make it. But you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, because there are many examples of men and women who have been in this thing. And who have fallen off because they did not do what the most high and his son wanted them to do so i give all praises to you how about shimmy al shot until next time it's the brother ash signing out